Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, you've seen it. You've heard it. There's so much talk about vitamin D out there. And I guess the first question is, what does vitamin D do? Well, it, it does several things. And probably the most important is that it helps your body absorb calcium, which your bones need to stay strong. And also, the vitamin D uh, can play a role in your nervous system, your immune system, and your muscle function. So, I mean, it is an important vitamin. And you can get vitamin D in three different ways. You can get it through your skin, you can get it from your diet, or you can get it from supplements. And it sounds like a lot of people are doing that. Vitamin D is found in a lot of foods, including milk, yogurt, fish, eggs, and my favorite, cod liver oil. Mm. The sun also adds to the body's daily production of vitamin D. And as little as 10 minutes of exposure a day is probably enough to keep you from being vitamin D deficient. We know that vitamin D is important to bone health, but there have been other important claims for vitamin D as well. You may have heard it can be used to treat depression or prevent heart disease or even cancer. Here to discuss vitamin D is Mayo Clinic endocrinologist, Dr. Sandeep Kosla. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Kosla. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Sandeep, nice to have you here. We really need an expert when it comes to the question about vitamin D. And there are a lot of vitamins that our bodies need. We all know that. But but what's so special about vitamin D? Well, vitamin D has gathered a lot of interest, not not only because of its possible effects on bone, as you mentioned, but because of a lot of interest and some evidence that it may actually be important for other things such as immune function, cancer prevention, prevention of heart disease. So I think more so than any other vitamin, it's garnered this interest because in uh, population studies or epidemiological studies, higher levels of vitamin D seem to be protective against uh, many diseases beyond uh, just bone. Do you believe it? Well, uh, Yes and no. I mean, I think the evidence from the population studies is certainly uh, suggestive that there's a role for vitamin D, uh, not only in bone, but in other uh, uh, diseases. The problem is that uh, these kinds of observational studies are subject to a lot of potential biases and errors. Mm. So they're useful for generating hypotheses, but those hypotheses need to be tested in rigorous randomized control trials. And so far, uh, the, the only the, the strongest evidence that vitamin D is beneficial is, in fact, for bone and prevention of fractures. Its role in any of the other myriad diseases that it's been associated with in the kind of observational or populational studies uh, still really remains to be established. So there is no evidence at the present time that vitamin D is good for preventing or treating depression, that it's good for preventing or treating heart disease, or uh, preventing cancer. Correct. Is that correct? Not from rigorous randomized controlled clinical trials, which is the highest bar of evidence that we all want to see before we recommend its use for those kinds of diseases. And are those studies ongoing? Is is that what's what stage we're at? Correct. So there are a number of large studies that are ongoing, uh, specifically examining uh, this, that, that question. And are those studies looking to see if excessive doses of vitamin G, D or just a regular everyday allotment is what is needed? So that's a good question because, you know, there's a lot of kind of discussion and some confusion about right now what's the best amount of vitamin D to take. And in fact, it's such an important question that the Institute of Medicine uh, actually formed a expert task force to address that question. And in general, their recommendations were that for most people, 600 units, or if you were over the age of 70, 800 units of vitamin D is sufficient. Now, some patients may, you know, especially if they have osteoporosis, we may ask them to take 800 or 1,000 units of vitamin D. More than that probably isn't beneficial and may even be harmful. Uh, the, the safe upper limit that the Institute, Institute of Medicine uh, noted was about 4,000 units. There are people out there who are taking even higher levels than that, and that can cause uh, serious side effects. So the studies that are ongoing range from, you know, anywhere from taking 1,000 to 2,000 units of vitamin D, which are still within the safe range. But I think until we know more, for most patients, 800 to 1,000 units is uh, probably a reasonable guideline. And do you get that from your food? Is that a diet? The diet can provide that, or should people be taking vitamin D supplements? 
it, unless you like cod liver oil or you know certain of the foods that you mentioned, it's actually not that easy to get all your vitamin D just from foods. Uh, sunshine is a good way. Obviously, that has to be balanced against the risk of uh, uh, skin exposure to sunrise, uh, sunshine and uh, the risk of uh, skin cancers. So for many people, if not most people, some kind of vitamin D supplement is appropriate. And, you know, most multivitamins now have anywhere between 700 and 1,000 units of vitamin D. So in general, if you're taking a multivitamin, that in itself may be enough. Uh, to get you enough vitamin D. So if you're uh, outside, outdoors, no matter where you live uh, in the United States, for a, a, a period of time during the day, let's say a half hour or an hour, and you eat a normal diet, do and you're male, do you need to take a vitamin with vitamin D in it? Probably not. If you're getting enough sun exposure, as you suggested, uh, that should be sufficient. Uh, the problem becomes that particularly in the northern climates where people don't get out in the sun enough, especially in the winter months, it can be a problem. And, and we've noted, and many studies have noted, seasonal variations in blood levels of vitamin D, which do tend to go down considerably in the winter months and then come back up in the summer months. And, and how about women? Uh, when should they start taking a multivitamin or at least vitamin D? And why is that important and more important for women than men? Yeah, it is more important for women uh, at all stages of life. So, you know, during growth and development, vitamin D is important for boys and girls uh, to absorb calcium and build up the skeleton. Uh, during pregnancy, women actually mobilize uh, especially after uh, delivery when they're breastfeeding, quite a bit of calcium from bone, and it ends up in breast milk. So having enough calcium stores in bone is particularly important even for younger women. And then certainly as women age, the big difference or one big difference between what happens to women and men is the presence of the menopause in women, which really is a major insult to the skeleton, if you will, and causes uh, can cause rapid bone loss. So for those women also, adequate vitamin D is important. That tricky menopause. Yeah. Hey, let's so, talk about that just a little bit more. So if someone has not taken vitamin D or that's not been a part of their health plan, um, that's something that they should reconsider if, as you go through these different stages of life? Yes, they should. Uh, and especially as they approach the menopausal years, I think women should optimize their calcium and the vitamin D intake to make sure that their sort of their bones are as well prepared as they can be uh, as they face the advent of uh, estrogen deficiency and the bone loss that happens in all women. And so how do you know if you're getting enough vitamin D? Well, most people, if they're you know taking about 800 to 1,000 units, will have adequate vitamin D levels. Um, Let's say you're not taking it, but you're concerned, and you're a woman, and you're 50. Can you have it checked? Right. You, you certainly can have a blood test. Uh, it's called a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level, uh, and, and that's a simple blood draw. It can be measured, um, and the levels that are considered acceptable vary a little bit depending on who you speak to. The Institute of Medicine recommended a blood level above 20 nanograms per ml, whereas uh, different organizations have suggested an even higher level above 30. My own view is above 20 is probably adequate, um, and you don't really need to push it to very high levels. The, the question that I had originally was, uh, who should be taking a vitamin D supplement? But maybe the better question is, is there anyone who shouldn't take a vitamin D supplement? Uh, in general, you know, they're safe. Uh, I think uh, the only concern might be uh, maybe patients who have a high risk of kidney stones. They may want to be cautious yeah. about their calcium and vitamin D intake because if those patients uh, end up with a little, even a little too much vitamin D, that might increase the amount of calcium that they're absorbing and increase their, their chances of getting a kidney stone. All right, now you know the latest scoop on vitamin D from a Mayo Clinic expert, endocrinologist, hormone doctor, Dr. Sandeep Gosla. Thanks for being here. My pleasure.